So we're talking about an enormous industry if that is to be delivered. And remember, Paris said, we want to do more. That's not enough. Um, we want to get one and a half degrees. And uh, this is a quote from a, a, a Canadian um, uh, colleague. Uh, we're clearly at a critical juncture in history where human impacts have reached or surpassed at tipping points, uh, acknowledged, as acknowledged by the scientific community for decades. Uh, political leaders have been a bit slower, um, uh, but now we have a universal, legally binding agreement taking effect from 2020. Um, it's, he says, an enormously positive and hopeful response, but of course it doesn't deliver anything of itself. It's all about an implementation. And of course, uh, political leaders, uh, the speed may be, it varies globally and regionally. Um, the word hasn't reached parts of Kerry yet. But there is momentum, there's substantial momentum. And uh, recently, just uh, a, couple, a couple of weeks ago, 175 countries signed up in what, uh, the, the biggest first day signature of any treaty. This is to the Par Paris Agreement. Um, now, the IEA has done some numbers and has um, taken to branding energy efficiency now as the first fuel on the basis of the the, um, uh, the energy that has been uh, delivered through efficiency is now actually greater um, than oil, gas, coal, and electricity together. And so it's on that basis that they're making uh, this, and they're using this now in their policy documents and so on, energy efficiency as the first fuel. But this uh, indicates um, the long-term economic energy efficiency uh, potential by different sectors. And so they're saying an uh, industry, um, transport, power generation, and in buildings. And what they're saying is that on the basis of current policies over the time scale to 2035, we're going to see less than half of that in industry delivered and in buildings less than 20% of the economic potential for efficiency on the basis of current policies with strengthened regulations and uh, incentive programs and so on. So there is an enormous challenge if we are to make the necessary kind of changes. And this is um, uh, really quite up-to-date information. It's uh, American figures, admittedly, rather than uh, European figures. It's from, uh, from March. And what it's, what it's looking is at the life, to, they use an index called the levelized cost of, uh, of energy uh, to, to look at the cost, not just the initial cost, but also the lifetime cost of different uh, energy technologies. And whereas you see on one side, one extreme, uh, uh, well, the extreme would be uh, coal with carbon capture and sequestration. So a, a really high cost uh, coming through uh, nuclear, through biomass, uh, unadulterated coal, and PV coming in, um, uh, wind and uh, combined cycle gas turbines. But here's energy efficiency. Again, powerful arguments all over the place for efficiency at the bigger scale and, of course, here in Ireland, these things apply also.